Have you noticed that traditional relationships seem like the thing of the past? Let's face it, the dating marketplace, and I call it a marketplace because that's literally what it's become, is a total mess. I mean, it's very challenging to connect with people, unlike in the past, when we oftentimes met people in our workplace, maybe the town or village we lived in. It was much easier. Maybe it was our college, maybe our school. And now the landscape of dating has changed so much that it makes it difficult to determine if someone legitimately wants, some, legitimately wants something serious or something casual. And it's rather sad to think that dating has become a shit show. I'm just gonna call it for what it is. So I think it's important to explore why is this the case? Is it the dating apps is the problem? Is it the swipe dating apps? Is it because there's this paradox of choice? Is it because people are unconscious? Is it because people can hide behind the screen? Is that part of the problem with connecting with people who are serious? versus those who are casual? Is it because of the hookup culture? Is that part of the problem? Is it so easy? And I'm please forgive this analogy, whether it relates or not. Can you, you get the milk for free instead of buying the cow? Is that it? Are these part of the problems or is there something deeper underneath that causes human beings to give mixed signals? And this is true. Listen, I, lady, I, my audience is women, so I get it. You like to point the finger at men. But I want you to know, there's always three fingers pointing back at you. Ladies, you're no picnic either. You give mixed signals all the time. It's very confusing for us men because quite frankly, it's confusing because there, I mean, it, there's because this overwhelm of perceived choice and, and dysfunctionality. So let's go under the surface. Why does this happen? Why do men give mixed signals? And, or why do men and women give mixed signals? Well, I think it's really important to address that childhood wounds and traumas, as well as adult traumas, cause human beings to be rather dysfunctional in their dating lives. Let me repeat that. Human beings are rather dysfunctional in their dating lives. And if you haven't seen my chart, um, now it's going to take me a second to find it because it's buried here, you know. There's basically emotional maturity and relationship skills for most humans is weak. And if you haven't seen my chart on emotional maturity and relationship skills, I want you to note here, it says, this is merely, this is not a fact. It's merely an opinion. I believe roughly 20% of the population has clinical issues, borderline personality, bipolar, narcissism. These are things that are diagnosed issues. And while I say over here 20% of the population is um, healthy, that's being ridiculously generous because most everybody is dysfunctional. So is there any wonder if a human being is rather dysfunctional that they might operate in characteristics that isn't consistent? You know, we all love the idea of people with character and integrity, actions matching words. Of course, that sounds great. But if you've had childhood wounds and traumas and adult traumas like divorce, and divorce for those of us in midlife is an unraveling of the tapestry of our old life, and oftentimes it's a contentious experience. Ladies, I hear you complain all the time about your ex-husbands. Well, men complain all the time about their ex-wives. And maybe you can find the truth in the middle of that. And childhood wounds and traumas, folks, there's a picture of my mom and dad, okay? This was when they were in their 20s. My mom, bless her heart, she, she, she was a loving person. But anytime she was upset at my dad, my brother or I, she would withdraw love from us. She'd stonewall. She would literally go silent for days. And I'm a little 12-year-old boy going, mommy, love me, mommy, love me, mommy, love me when she abandoned us. And imagine how this wears on a human being. And I'm just one example of that. It created an anxious attachment style with me, within me. If you're not familiar with love attachment style, I highly recommend checking out the book Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller to understand the difference between anxious, avoidant, and secure attachment styles. And also another dysfunctionality within humans, men and women alike, is we gravitate to partners that are unhealthy for us because we're trying to heal a childhood wound within our parents. Why do women choose bad boys? 
It's because their daughter, or excuse me, their father was most likely dysfunctional in his life. And if you're not familiar with the book, Getting the Love You Want by Harvell Hendricks and Helen Hunt, I highly recommend you check this out so you can learn about the imago. The imago means mirror imaging, it's image. We, we choose based on our, our, our upbringing, our imprinting. So is it any wonder when we choose the wrong partner for us, we're going to give mixed signals because one side of us wants one thing, but we're, we're fighting against the other side that's trying to heal a wound. And yet so often, women as well as men throw the other person under the bus as lacking character, lacking integrity. When a lot of this is so ingrained in us, it's so ingrained that it's difficult unless you've done the healing work to actually improve your personality, to improve your negative patterns and limiting beliefs. This is why I continually recommend the book, The Hoffman Process. This is a deep dive into healing childhood wounds and traumas, which actually frees you from making poor choices. And most of you are suckling on the nipple of, I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. Ladies, I'm sorry, on some level, you, you operate from a biological instinctual perspective of dependency on men throughout, throughout caveman history, up until about 50 or 60 years ago, women were predominantly dependent upon men for survival. So no wonder it's ingrained in you. And yet it makes you such beautiful human beings because your nurturers, your givers, your agreeable personalities are great. And yet it sets you up for failure because if you choose the wrong man, you might give your heart to the wrong human being, the man who's not capable of going serious. He might only be capable of casual. And if you need some help with that, check out this link, jonathanaslake.com, free call, to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. I help you learn how to ask the right questions to determine, based on your personality, to determine if he's the right fit for you. Listen, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. 